Right, so in this video I'm going to have a look at solving linear equations using matrices and I'm going to solve these three equations here. We have three equations, we have three unknowns and I've done a video previously where we've solved these kind of equations using algebra but in this video I'm just going to use uh, matrices to solve them. So in other words at the end we should end up with x, a y and a z where if we put the x, y and z in here we'll end up with minus one, so we'll end up with one if we put the same x, y, and z in here, we'll end up with minus 4. If we put the same x, y, and z in here, we'll end up with minus 3. So I've written the, um, these three equations using matrices here. Um, these represent the coefficients of the x's. These represent the coefficients of the y's. And these represent the coefficients of the z's. Um, we have our x, y, and z here. And these are our numbers on the right-hand side of the equations. So you can see if you multiply 5 by x, 3 by y, minus 1 by z, that will give you 1. 6 by x, 2 by y, minus 4 by z, that will give you uh, minus 4, and so on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with this part here. Uh, so I'm going to write down 5, 6, 1, 3, 2, 1, minus 1, minus 4, minus 1. Now, I'm going to write the equations in, or the, the matrix here, in what's called an augmented matrix form. So I'm going to put the coefficients here and the three numbers on the right-hand side of the equations here. So 1, minus 4, minus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this part of the matrix, this part of the augmented matrix, down to what's called reduced echelon form. So in other words, or I'm going to turn it into an identity matrix, if you like, where you end up with a 1, 1, and 1 here. And the 3 minus 1 minus 4, they'll all become zeros. The 6, 1, and 1 will become zeros as well. And as I change these numbers here, I'm going to change these numbers as well. Um, and that's where I want to end up. Now, in order to reduce these numbers down to 1, 1, and 1 in the diagonal and everything else, 0, um, I'm going to perform certain operations and the operations I'm going to perform will be multiplying each row by a particular number, by any number. That's one thing you can do. So I can multiply this number, this row here by let's say 3. It's the equivalent of multiplying this equation here by 3. Multiplying the 5 by 3, this by 3, this by 3 and this by 3 here. The other thing I can do is I can interchange rows. So in other words, I can take this row here and swap it with this row here. It's just the equivalent of taking this equation here and swapping it with this equation here. The other thing I can do is multiply a row by any number and add it to another row or subtract it. So it's just like, say, multiplying this row here by minus 6 and adding it to row 2 here in order to get rid of this x here. So I can multiply this by minus 6 and add it to this row here. So there are the three um, operations that we're going to use in order to reduce this part of the matrix, this part of the augmented matrix, to um, the identity matrix. Now, there are a number of different ways of doing this. So um, I'm going to do it a particular way, but um, you may do it a slightly different way in order to get to the end goal. But uh, and different people will do it different ways. But um, let's start anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to write down in each case what exactly I'm doing. So in the first case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I said earlier. I'm actually going to take row 2, and I'm going to subtract six times row three. So I'm taking, I'm multiplying this here by six, if you like, and subtracting it from this row here. So I'm going to multiply this by six, subtract it from this row here. So if I do that, what happens? Let's see. Nothing happens to the first row, so I'll just write it down again. So I end up with one here. Now I'm going to take six minus six times one which is 0. I'm going to take 2 minus 6 times 1, which is minus 4. I'm going to take minus 4 minus 6 times minus 1. So minus 6 times minus 1 is plus 6. So I have minus 4 plus 6, which is 2. I've got minus 4 minus 6 times minus 3, 
Well, minus 6 times minus 3 is plus 18. Minus 4 plus 18, 14. I didn't do anything with the last row, so I'll just write that down again. Okay. So let's do the next row then. So next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to take row 1 and I'm going to subtract 5 times row 3. So what happens if I do that? So I'm going to take row 1. Let me just write that in here now. So I'm going to take row 1 and I'm going to subtract 5 times row 3. So 5 minus 5 times 1, that will just give me uh, 0 here. 3 minus 5 times 1, so 3 minus 5, that will just give me minus 2. Minus 1, minus 5 times minus 1 is plus 5, so minus 1 plus 5, that will give me 4. And here I've got 1 minus 5 times minus 3, so that's a plus 15, so 1 plus 15, that'll give me 16. And the rest are unchanged. Okay, so let's do the next operation then. So in this case, I'm going to take row 3 and row 1, row 3, row 3 rather, this one here, and row 1, and I'm just going to interchange them. So I'm going to take row 1 and row 3 and I'm going to interchange those two rows so let's do that so I'll end up with 1 1 minus 1 here and a minus 3 here this is 0 minus 4 2 and 14 and here I end up with 0 minus 2 4 and 16 let me just move this over a little bit looks like 24 it's actually a 4 here Okay, so um, next one. Now I've interchanged row 3 and row 1, so next thing I'm going to do is divide rows 2 and 3 by minus 2. I'm going to take these two rows here and I'm going to divide by minus 2. So I'm going to divide rows 2 and rows 3 by minus 2. So let's see what happens when we do that. So we get 1, 1, minus 1, and minus 3. Here I end up with 0, 2, minus 1, minus 7. Here I end up with 0, 1, minus 2, and minus 8. Okay. So all I've done is divided these numbers and these numbers here by minus 2. Next one then is I'm going to take uh, row 2. I'm going to take row 2 and I'm going to subtract twice row 3. So I'm going to um, take twice row 3 and I'm going to subtract it from row 2. Sorry, this one here. I'm going to take twice this row here and subtract it from this row here. Let's run through that. So row 1 is unaffected, so we write that down again. Okay, so row 2 minus twice row 3. Well, 0 minus twice 0 is just going to be 0. 2 minus twice 1, so 2 ones are 2, so 2 minus 2, that's going to give me 0. Um, I've got minus 1 minus twice 2 so that's um, minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4 so minus 1 plus 4 will give me 3 uh, minus 7 minus twice minus 8 well minus twice times minus 8 is plus 16 minus 7 plus 16 will give me 9 and the last row then is unchanged. So 0, 1, minus 2, minus 8. Okay, next one then. Um, 
Right, so this time I'm going to take row 2 and I'm just going to divide it by 3. So I'm going to take row 2 and I'm going to divide it by 3. So first row is unchanged, 1, 1, minus 1, and 3. That's a minus 3. Here I'll end up with 0, 0, 1, 3. And here I have 0, 1, minus 2, minus 8. Next one then, <coughs> I'm going to take row 2 and row 3, row 2 and row 3, and I'm just going to interchange those. Row 2 and row 3, which I'm just going to interchange. So I've got 1, 1, minus 1, minus 3. Now I'm interchanging rows 2 and 3, so here I'll end up with 0, 1, minus 2, minus 8. And on the bottom here I'll end up with 0, 0, 1, and 3. Okay, so you can see here what I've done. I've ended up with 1, 1, and 1 here in the diagonal, so that's fine so far. I just need to change these to zeros as well. Now there is a way of just stopping here, going back to the equations, and working them out. You can see here that this z here, this is this, this is effectively my coefficient of z, and that's going to be equal to 3. So I know that z is going to be equal to 3. And I can put that in here and work out my y, and then put those two in here and work out x. But I'll just continue on and do what I said I was going to do initially, and just end up with all zeros except for this diagonal here. That'll give me x, y, and z directly. So let's just do the next line. Um, Okay, so we've interchanged rows 2 and 3. The next thing I'm going to do is add row 1 and row 3. I'm going to add, take row 1 and add row 3. So, one, so this row plus this row here. So 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. Minus 1 plus 1 will give me a 0. Um, minus 3 plus 3 will also give me a 0 here. And here I'll end up with 0, 1, minus 2, minus 8, 0, 0, 1, and 3 here. Right, so uh, next one then, I'm going to take row 2 and add twice row 3. I'm going to take row 2 and add twice row 3. Okay, so row 2 and row 3, so row 1 doesn't change. 1, 1, 0, and 0. Now, row 2, so 0 plus twice 0 is just going to be 0. 1 plus twice 0 is going to be 1. Minus 2 plus twice 1, that will give me 0. And minus 8 plus twice uh, 3, 2 3s are 6 minus 8 will give me minus 2. Here I'll end up with nothing changes here, so it's 0, 0, 1, and 3. So we're almost there. There's one more operation to go. That should do it for us. Um, so we just got to turn this here into a 0. So what I'm going to do is take row 1 and subtract row 2. So I'm going to take row 1 and subtract row 2. So row 1 minus row 2. So that will give me 1, 0, 0. And 0 minus minus 2 is plus 2, so I'll end up with plus 2 here. Nothing else changes here. 1, 0, minus 2, 0, 0, 1, and three. Okay, so we've done it. We've ended up with our reduced echelon form. So we've ended up with our reduced echelon form for our uh, matrix. So you can see here, these are our coefficients of x, these are our coefficients of y, these are our coefficients of z. So you can just this is these are x, y, z, and these are our solutions here. So we can see here that x is equal to 2. We can see that y is equal to minus 2. And we can see here that z is equal to 3. 
which we saw earlier we had it up here somewhere I think uh, we said it here I think that the Z was equal to 3 so as I said you could have said that um, 1Y minus 2 z is equal to minus eight and then just substitute it in the three and work out what y is and then substitute it in both in here to work out x but we went the full distance here and we ended up with an x equal to two y equal to minus two and a z equal to three so that's it for solving equations you can there are many different ways of doing this i would imagine this is the way i worked it out but um Different people will do it in slightly different ways, the same as different people will do the algebraic method in slightly different ways. But you should end up with the same uh, three answers. And you can also do this not, not only for um, equations with three unknowns, but two unknowns and so on.